Yo, what is going on, my random rim rockers? I am back for more Blender tutorials. Actually, this is not a Blender tutorial. This is more of a Blender tips and tricks video. Just discovered this uh, cool little lighting and volumetric setup rendering technique that is really unique and some people have been asking about it. It's a physically accurate way to render the sky and light scattering in our atmosphere on earth so yeah it gives some really cool results which i'll show you later i've also got a little bit of a bad news to share um from how busy i've been in college lately i don't think i can release any more minecraft animations anytime soon or maybe at least for another like two or three more years so yeah i'm pretty much quote unquote done with minecraft animations at this point for now like i could Totally, of course, continue more Minecraft animations after college, but God knows how I would be at that point, like whether or not I would still be into Minecraft animations. The point is, it looks like I can't do Minecraft animations anymore, so I've thought of sharing some of my uh, knowledge about Blender and techniques that I use when creating my Minecraft animations, because these are things that I've learned that I can no longer really take advantage of anymore. So yeah, I'm just gonna share, share what I know throughout the community. I'm just gonna make these types of videos every once in a while whenever I have time to even make these. So hopefully this helps and yeah, let's get into it. So I have some pre-rendered shots over here. It's a mountaintop and you can, as you can see, this render perfectly demonstrates the atmospheric conditions, you know, the light, the volumetric scattering of, you know, you can see the distant landscape over here and it's like blending the border of the world with the sky, which is not a very easy thing to do. You need a lot of land to seamlessly blend this, otherwise you can still easily see the borders or you have to crank your volumes up crazy to blur the line. One thing to take note about this render is that there are no HDRIs that is being used. Actually, there is a sky texture that is procedurally gen generated, but it's not the sky of, it's not the blue sky, it's actually some stars, which you can't even see right now. Actually, you can see a little bit of some dots over here, but that's not supposed to be there. It's, um, I think I have cranked that too high. It's supposed to be just the night sky, but the blue of this sky is actually rendered through the atmosphere's fog. So this rendering technique that I've discovered is physically accurate in the way it renders the atmosphere. So it has a slight tint and the settings are set just right so that it, you know, as the sun, like depending on the angle where the sun is shining on, it kind of changes the hue of the sky. So, you know, let's say I bring my, my sun lamp. This is a sun lamp, by the way, it's not a HDRI. So I'm using a literate lamp. You ca I can move it around. So no HDRIs, keep that in mind. Let's say I bring the sun like down here, slightly lower, closer to the horizon. Well, if I move on to the next shot, you can see the sun is slightly lower now, but the sky is now scattering slightly orangey yellow colors as opposed to right here, it's like bluish white. So yeah, the, the closer the sun gets, the more twilight colors, orange, reddish colors starts to scatter and just fills the sky. So this is physically accurate. I did not animate or change the colors of the volumetrics when, I, when I'm when i rendering these. It's all I'm doing is just changing the position of the sun. So yeah, blue, yellow, orange, and now going to like reddish colors now when it, go, when it gets really close to the horizon. And over here it's like, yeah, this is exactly how a sunset in real life would look like. And as the sun gets lower, the sky gets darker and you can start seeing the stars that I've placed. So yeah, this is this is the HD, the sky texture that I was talking about. It's a sky texture procedurally generated of stars. So yeah, it's it's literally how real life works. You know, when you can't see the stars when it's daytime is because it's the sky is too bright. But as the sun gets lower, you start seeing the stars because it starts being visible as it starts uh, matching the brightness of the sky. And yeah, once it gets to this point, it's it's nighttime. Here's the same project file in Blender. And as you can see, if I take the sun lamp right here and holy crap, it's pretty laggy. If I rotate it like, I don't know, slightly lower, look at this. It is changing the color of the sky without me doing anything. 
if I hide the uh, giant terrain here so it renders faster, you can see it like right now it's when the sun is like this high up, it scatters pretty blue colors. As it gets lower, yellowish start the yellowish tint starts to appear, it becomes orange, red. You know, it's physically accurate. One thing to keep in mind though is that it's rendering extremely slowly. I'm using an RTX 3070, my laptop GPU. So it's it's pretty powerful, but it's still taking a long as time to render. So if you do plan on using this in your projects, keep in mind you need a pretty good GPU to render stuff like this. And the only time you would really want to render this way is when you're like, I don't know, animating like a, a time-lapse scene of the sky getting darker as it rolls over to twilight and nighttime, which isn't really something that you see a lot. So it's pretty case specific, otherwise it's not really worth it. But another benefit of rendering this way is that the sky and the fog is combined together because the sky and the fog in real life, it, they, are, they are basically the same thing. The sky is just a fogged up version of space itself, the black of space. So instead of seeing a black sky, it scatters as blue. And same goes for the environment. Your distant objects are fogged up and look more bluish colors because that's how the atmosphere scatters light. And if I exit the camera view right here, oh my gosh, it's rendering so slow. Okay, no matter. Let me just zoom out for a second and you can see uh, if I bring my, okay, it's pretty big. Yeah, this is literally space with like a sheet of atmosphere. So this is just one thick volume dense a plane, a cuboid here, in the middle of space with sun over here. So this is literally like simulating the Earth's atmosphere. It's it's literally that. And I'm gonna show you how I did this. It's not. It's actually pretty straightforward how to recreate this. So let's get into a new project file, and I'll show you how to do it. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is a massive world. I'm just gonna grab my cube, um, scale it all on all axes except the z-axis. So shift, uh, shift. I mean S shift is Z, so it's scaling everywhere except the Z axis. I'm gonna make this huge so we'll scale like 50 I guess. Yeah. You wanna make sure like you can't you wanna make sure the edges are like as huge as you could possibly get it. So much so huge so that uh you can't really see it. So it's gonna be a really thin sheet like this. Let's grab our lamp here and change this to a sun lamp. Strength of like five, I guess. And let's point at an angle. Also, you want to change the visibility here to being camera ray visibility as well, so you can see the sun itself. Oh yeah, and in the camera, you want to set the clipping, the clipping distance on the camera to be matching your own uh, viewport camera as well, so you can see the massive cuboid here. And yeah, that's just about it. Actually, this might be too big. Something like that. Go to the shader editor and delete the principal BSDF because it's for surface shaders, of course. And crank up my samples because volumetrics are noisy as crap. Make sure my uh, light bounces. Let's go to my light paths, max bounces. You want to bring the volumes, uh, volume bounces to be at least like a couple bounces to be more accurate. It's gonna render slower, but it will render a lot more accurately. Let's render, let's just go ahead and render it more and see how it looks like. Um, okay, so get a volume scatter node, plug it into the volume here. And immediately everything goes dark because the density is way too high. So let's set it to like 0 0.001, really low value. We wanna start off with really low values first. And yeah, now you can see when I select the sun lamp and rotate it around, you can see the sun, where it's coming from. It's definitely too huge right now. That's not how big the sun is supposed to be. So I'm gonna set like one, an angle of one. There we go. And yeah, now you basically got yourself a sky, but it's gray. So first off, you wanna like set a density value that looks somewhat okay. Also, let me hide the uh, volume first. Make sure you have your world um, color to be completely black or you want to give give your uh, world some stars just like how I did in the previous project you can also do that just make sure it's black so that you know the colors are coming from the volume itself so it's more accurate so when I was experimenting with the volumes I thought hmm the sky is blue so does that mean I set the color of the volume scatter to be slightly bluish and so that's what I did yeah right now already you're getting like a pretty blue sky and maybe the density is not high enough okay yeah Okay, the density 
is supposed to be like 0.05. Now it looks more like a sky and already you're getting that yellowish tint at the, at the edges here. If I bring my sun like up here, the yellow starts to fade a little bit less and when it goes down here, it starts being more yellow. So already this is, <laughs> this is physically accurate. However, when you can still see a, a bit of the sun when it's like over here. So that's why I want to uh, I I cr absolutely crank the X and Y scale. Let's bring it to like 10,000 maybe. Whenever your camera starts clipping the edges of your cuboid, that's when the volumes completely does not render. So you want to bring your end to be even higher here and yeah, now it blocks out more of the sun. Let's see if I bring it even higher how it, how it will look like. Um, two times higher. This actually looks more like a sky now. I'm going to add a plane, however, so that it blocks the floor and maybe some, I don't know, distant cubes in the background so that it's, I can see how much the fog is fogging up. You know, just place a bunch of, I don't know, random things. All right, you know, that's, that's good enough. So we can see how much it's fogging up the environment here. If I bring it down, and when I bring it down, it looks like it gives more bluish colors. You do not want to set your saturation like too high, otherwise it starts looking extremely unnatural, and I think you lose your yellowing color. Actually, oh wait, you, yeah, you do, it changes it to be more like green. This is actually a really cool effect, holy cow. Okay, this looks, this looks extremely unrealistic now, so we're going to change it back. I found saturation values between 0.7 and 0.8 works best. 0.75 is like the sweet spot in my opinion, so you set it at that. And the hue, um, 0.6 is, 0.65 gives you a little more purple now. 0.63, and this is all you need. That's the color that you need to get this looking fine. You could of course like bring up the uh, sun strength to make it brighter. Of course, you can even use curves to like punch up the uh, contrast of the sky. So I don't know, bring it like, this, hell yeah, make it brighter, bring it even down, I guess. So yeah, the, the more contrast you add, the more, the more the blue pops, so that's, that's really cool as well. I use contrast to like punch up my colors every time when I'm doing uh, renders. If you see your sky to be too dark, like at the top here, what you can do is uh, scale your, your cube right on the Z axis a bit more and it would, brighten it up. Oops, I actually duplicated it. Yeah, now the blue becomes... I scale even more. Yeah, the blue is less dark now, so it looks less... It looks like the atmosphere is less thin. If I, if I bring it to a really low Z value, it looks like the atmosphere is like... Oops, I keep duplicating it. Now it looks like the atmosphere is really thin. I think it's the curves that's like punching up too much, yeah. If I decrease the curves, it looks back to normal. Let me bring this down a little bit here. I see the like reddish, the twilight colors look slightly green. So I'm going to select my volume and bring it more to this side. Yeah, bring it this way. It looks more yellowish green. So yeah, I want to stay in the sweet, sweet spot of like 0.6 actually. So this is mostly what is needed to create this accurate sky rendering technique. One more thing I would like to uh, go through though is the anisotropy values. So if you if I increase the anisotropy here, you can see it sort of gets brighter and holy crap, now it's like god rays now. Basically what anisotropy does is that it intensifies the fogging effect or kind of glowing effect at areas where there is more shine, where it's brighter. So as you can see where this, the direction of the sun is right now, it's extremely bright. It's like almost glowing here. Whereas the opposite effect isn't really getting anything. It's in fact, it's kind of darker. And I bring my anisotropy values back to zero. You can see it reverses that. So yeah, in real life, it kind of does that. You know, when it, wherever the direction of the sun is, the sky looks brighter there. So I guess it's more realistic to uh, increase the anisotropy to somewhere like, I don't know, 0.3. And so yeah, this part is slightly brighter than here. Or you can even, you can exaggerate this according to your artistic likings, to your artistic directions. However you want, this is all customizable to your preferences. There's a lot of flexibility, just do it however you like it. If you bring the anisotropy too high, it kind of creates like a glaring effect. So like, look at this. It's basically the glare effect, but for volumes. It's really cool. 
holy crap, if I increase my, my density, just look, look how the atmosphere becomes even redder. I look at that, holy crap. You can do a lot with these volumes. This is just, I'm probably not even scratching the tip of the iceberg right here. With, with only these two parameters, you can do so much and also the color. But yeah, anyway, this is pretty much all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward, easy to set up, and but it does take a really long time to render, so that's pretty much the only drawback. And also, there is no clouds because you're not using a HDRI, you're just using volume, so you gotta add your clouds yourself, which seems like a very me thing to do because I go absolutely bonkers on realism when it comes to Minecraft animations. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's gonna do that, but I just plan on using Embergen to bake some volumetric clouds and just add a few in the scene that would make the scene look, that would completely transform the scene. Other than that, I guess this pretty much wraps up my tips and tricks or rendering technique um, tutorial or video, whatever I wanna call it. Yeah, hope this uh, helps a lot. Maybe no one would use it, but I don't know, just showing it out there. Pretty cool stuff. See ya.